so it's uh, Tuesday, another busy day. And uh, basically what I have to do on my first stop is unloosen or unstrap this, move it forward, pull out my ramp so that this uh, scissor lift can be uh, driven up. All right, so this had a lot of steps. So here we go. Step one, pull this front piece of freight forward. Step two, make sure it's not protruding from here so far that it clips my lights when I make a 90 degree turn. Step three, wrap up all the straps that I used to secure this piece of freight when it was back there. Make sure those are away. Step four, put my moving pads back down and secure this load again. Step five, put away the ramps unless I want to drag them down the road and lose them. Step six, get ready to secure this load down by pulling out the chains and binders. It's over 10,000 pounds, so it's one chain and binder per wheel or on each corner. Step seven, pull out my car wheel straps, mainly because this shipper really wanted not only the item to be chained down, but they want each wheel to be strapped down the way vehicles are, so that's fine. Wrap up the excess chain so it's not all over the street, all over the highway. Secure the wheels just like I would on a vehicle. 10 and 2. 10 and 2 on the straps. 10 and 2. By the way, these are made for, uh, for flatbed trailers because typically on car trailers, there's a rail with holes in it and these would have hooks that hook into the that floor rail obviously we don't have that on a on a wood on a wood hot shot on a wood uh straight deck trailer so these are made to hook onto the rub rails i'll put links to these in the description and in the comment section in case uh in case you want to be able to haul vehicles this is what you're going to need check height i'm at 12 feet and one two three four five I'm at 12.5. Final step, time to get moving. All right, so that is what I'm being told is part of this load. That's 25 feet. My load of 12 feet that I came in here with is there I had budgeted enough space for that load and 10 more feet plus um, to accommodate an eight foot piece, which I'm being told is the top of those two skids, which is great. And I figured, you know what, let me try to put this on, but that goes to a boat, which means it's really fragile and I'm not about to destroy that. So I reached out to the broker and told them, you know, there's only one eight foot piece, which is that one, and there's another mammoth piece which is that one that i did not budget for it's not in the rate con it wasn't on the load board it was not in our conversation so what am i taking because i cannot take that so if i end up taking nothing then i'll put in for a truck order not used and get paid 100 bucks 200 bucks for my time and leave with nothing or i'll leave with this top of those two pieces and take it to where it's going or they'll figure out what else in this warehouse is supposed to go other than that to where i'm headed so we'll see how this pans out It's pretty funny. I really, I rarely get to see where the things I haul are gonna go, but these railings are gonna go on that wall. <laughs> pretty funny. Uh, I got here like seven minutes before 4:30, and they closed at 4:30. It's a town uh, municipality, so I just made it. I think they expected me to un uh, unload them, but I don't do that. Uh, so they said, "Let me go get the maintenance people." So they're gonna go uh, get some guys to unload this, sign off on my paperwork. In the meantime, I'm gonna unstrap and hunker down for the night. I pulled in here thinking, all right, I must be grabbing one of those huge stacks or three of those huge stacks. There's supposed to be three pallets. It turns out that this is the only thing I'm grabbing. A uh, broker called me on a load that I called on yesterday. I called, I didn't like the price. They, are off, they were offering 200 bucks for 75 miles. I said, no way. And then uh, I called again at the end of the day because I still saw it on the board. Thought they would give me a better rate. She said it, sorry, she said it was gone. 
I'm guessing whoever took it flopped. She called me back this morning and said, did you call me yesterday on such and such a load? I said, yeah, I did. So she said, how's 300? I said, I'll take it. And then it turns out that I'm the first hot shot she's ever worked with. She works with big rig guys. I see this company on the load board all the time. I never, ever, ever, um, sorry. I never, ever uh, look at their loads because they're for big rigs. So anyway, she's having the first hot shot, which is huge. And uh, she says she'll keep me busy. So let's see. The OD load on the back gets delivered straight through, which means I just picked it up and I'm going to drop it off next. And the load on the front goes to New York tomorrow morning. That'll be my my Thursday morning delivery. And we'll see what uh what comes about for the rest of Thursday. And I made a left into this driveway and I'm over here, but I'm gonna have to back into right where I'm standing right now because I am right there. Gotta know how to back up. So I'm gonna have to 90 degree it down this way, into this way, and then go out that way. Gotta know how to back up. <laughs> Slow and steady, not too shabby. Like a boss, like a boss. Woo, it's sunny, it's bright, bright in the city. <laughs> So listen, I'm home and first day wearing shorts. Yep, the chicken legs are out. The chicken legs are out. Um, it's Friday. I was gonna take today off. I had taken today off. I was in my truck with my hiking sneakers on, these shorts on, and I was about to go hiking and record some footage for uh, the Ready, Set, Prepare course, which is just about done. I jumped in the truck, checked the load board one more time, and I realized, you know what? There's a load on here for $800 a mile. I mean, I wish, for $800. I called, uh, it's about a seven hour drive. I like to be at $100 a mile. So, I mean, hundred. man, what am I talking about? $100 a load, uh, man, $100 an hour. Sorry, guys. I, I wasn't even in the game, as you could tell. My head was not into trucking today. Anyway, I called, negotiated to uh, 950. I gotta go get it in Jersey, and then I'm gonna come home, let it sit over the weekend, um, and then I'll take it up to, uh, where's it going? New Hampshire, Upper New Hampshire uh, on Monday. So I'm gonna go grab it, drop it off, continue on my weekend. But it took me out of, not retirement, but it took me out of a day off. But hey, gotta get this money, man. Jersey is a freight hotspot for me, so I'm used to going in and out of it. I just try not to go through the city. Today I decided to just to see how the traffic is in the Corona era. The traffic isn't bad today, but the roads are still terrible. <laughs> Only in New York, man. Only in New York. There's no bridge quite as beautiful as the George Washington Bridge. It's massive. The view is absolutely crazy. And the toll coming back over it from New Jersey to New York is insanely expensive. So I only travel it sometimes when I'm going into Jersey, but never coming back from Jersey. So here's the New York City skyline and the George Washington Bridge in case you've never seen them. Back to work. Long pants on site are typically required. Got to put these on. Let me introduce you to my $950 load. This is it, folks. I did factor the 950 from that Monday delivery load into this figure, but don't worry. I also factored in the mileage and the fuel associated with it as well. If you've watched this long and still haven't jumped into my free hotshot course, stop playing around. The link is in the comment section below and also in the description section. There's also links there for factoring, ELD, um, how to get your free DOT number, how to get your 30 days free for DAT load board, everything you need to get started or at least to get a better understanding of the business. And if you are getting started, that's definitely where you want to go.